Stellar Blade, Nier Automata. These are two video games. I know, shocking information, possible revelation for some of you out there. Stellar Jade is an upcoming game for the PS5. By the same development studio as Nikkei, that one gacha game you've probably seen plenty of videos about, let's call it the physics, in regards to. And many people, and even the developers themselves, are claiming a lot of inspiration for Stellar Blade, from its world, character design, and even story, and overall theme, are clearly inspired by another game called Nier Automata. Nier Automata is my personal favorite game of all time. I love the game to death, and I have talked about the game extensively in the past, and just what about it makes it so brilliant and well-beloved and so special to me. And Nier Automata, in a lot of ways, showcased to me the true potential of what video games can do and how video games can tell a story. There's a lot of aspects to Nier Automata that, in my opinion, many other games should learn from and adapt from. Now, I have a bit of a sore throat today, so if I sound a little bit out of it, that's kind of why. But there's another aspect to Nier Automata, and now even Stella Jade, that has been talked about, but I don't feel that people really talk about this subject matter with the appropriate nuance, and that is, well, the fan service. Look, it's blatant, right? And even a couple days ago on Twitter, there was someone who asked the question, and the TLDR of the question is essentially if 2B wasn't the main character and she didn't look like that, and the main character was a more generic, what you kind of expect to see from a lot of these JRPGs kind of anime boy, if that was the main character instead of 2B, would Nia Automata have done as well? And I feel a lot of the reaction to that tweet, well, kind of missed the forest for the trees. Getting up in a kind of a fit in regards to whether or not 2B was even a main character, saying things like, did you even play the game? And going on diatribes about how brilliant Nia Automata is, and I'm absolutely no stranger to the idea of going on a giant yap fest about why I love Nia Automata so much, right? But I also I also think it's kind of missing an aspect of Nier Automata, and that is, yeah, there's a lot of fan service to it. And when people hear that, they a lot of the times can get defensive, especially if they like that piece of media. Almost as if the claim that it is fan service to begin with detracts or takes away from the real beauty of what's going on here, and I don't think that has to be the case. Now, I think sometimes games, movies, anime, whatever, can utilize fan service in a way that takes away from the immersion and from the story and all that and use it as mainly a way to distract you from what's actually going on. I don't really think Nier Automata ever really does that, in my opinion. It just has a certain level of, well, suspension of disbelief to assume that, okay, yeah, you're her, this will be their battle uniform. You make that one jump, and then you're pretty much fine. Because in the world that is established in Nier Automata, well, this all kind of just fits and makes sense. And aesthetically kind of meshes with one another. But I tend to find that when it comes to Nier games or just Yoko Taro games overall, there's really two elements to keep in mind. Either he is telling some kind of masterpiece of storytelling, and every little detail of minutia is going to matter or make sense in a recontextualized state, at some point down the line, either as brilliant foreshadowing, anticipation, tension, or it's gonna have some kind of like double entendre or even triple entendre. Stuff like that, right? A lot of the near story, and especially Automata, can be viewed through that context. And there's also another significant chunk of it that can just be like chalked up to, well, Yoko Taro was kind of down bad that day when he wrote this. I don't view that as a negative. And I don't view that as something that detracts from the overall experience, right? Now, obviously, it kind of boils down to personal preference and just what you find tolerable in regards to this. I personally just have a decently high tolerance when it comes to fan service and all this kind of stuff when it comes to these games. So long as the base game is good enough to support it, in my opinion, Nia Automata was. And I think a big part of Nia Automata's marketing was 2B. And I think trying to take away from that is kind of doing a disservice to the identity and the functionality of Nia Automata. It draws you in in one direction, makes you think it's going to go one way when it zigs and zags to the other one. Like, that's an aspect of how Nia Automata tells and conveys its story that can be kind of be lost on us as we play the game over the course of years. Like, I first played Nia Automata way back when at the end of 2017, at the beginning of 2018. That December, January windows when I played Nier Automata. And I played it a few times since, and knowing everything about the game as I do now, 
everything can be recontextualized and all that in accordance to the story. But first going in, yeah, the game does kind of give you the impression that it's going to be kind of fan y but give you an interesting apocalyptic landscape to explore and all that. But then it zigs and zags into another direction where it goes more existential on you and asks a lot of these really important questions as to what it means to be alive and all that. Like, that's part of the charm of going from route A and B, or even route A to B, and then all of that to route C. Like, in some ways, you can make an argument, and I think you can make a damn good argument in regards to this, that the fan service in Nia Automata, you know, like 2B's ass and all that, like, that in some way contributes to what Nia Automata is trying to do. It pulls you in and makes you get into the game for whatever reason you damn well fancy, but then it's going to grab you and engage you on this deep philosophical level. You go in for one reason, but come, well, not even come out, you stay for another, essentially. Like the idea of going to a party for the drinks or the food and then staying for the people you meet there. You may come into it with a different expectation and coming in for a different reason, but you're gonna stay, perhaps, for something else, or something that you didn't anticipate going into it. That's part of the charm of the Automata, and the fan service and the sexualization of some of the characters in regards to that is part of that. So I think the effort that some people do to try and minimalize that, or try and pretend that the fan service isn't there, it's not really doing anything for upholding the cause of Nia Automata. At the end of the day, it's a game by a multi-billion dollar corporation. And I love the game, and I love the message that it tells. But it's important to understand how that message is conveyed and why it works. And also, as a concept, I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with fan service. Like, at the end of the day, there's gonna be a lot of people that got into Nia Automata because they found to be attractive. Like, that's just going to be the case. Or, it'll at least be some component. Imagine a pie chart. It may not be the entire pie, but it's gonna be at least a slice. And that slice, and the size of that slice, may vary from person to person. It may be bigger or smaller, depending upon who you are. But for a lot of people, the character design of 2B may be a slice. And again, I don't think that's a bad thing. There's a reason there's a saying that sex sells in regards to advertisement. People like looking at pretty or attractive things at people. That's just the way of it, whether or not you want to actually fully admit it or not. Now again, this does kind of vary depending upon your own personal preferences and all that, and in terms of like what you want to see, but chances are, you want to look at something that you personally find attractive or just pleasing to the eye. More so than something that you don't. And again, I want to reiterate that this may vary from person to person, but on the whole, for society and a lot of consumers, I tend to find that this is the, ca the case, or the way of things. For instance, a lot of the characters that I play in video games, if you give me a character creator, will look like some version of me, but a more idealistic version of me. Like, I'm a, I'm a large guy with red hair, and the top of my head is bald or balding. So I shave the top of my head and have a beard. Chances are, if I make a character in a game, it's gonna be a tall dude, who's probably muscular, with a red beard. And he's bald. Now, I'm also a fat guy, but I don't want to play as a fat guy in a game. I don't want to be a fat guy in real life. That's just my own personal preference, which is why I'm down 100 pounds at this point, and I'm continuing to lose weight, and a lot of weight. But I want to play as an idealized version of myself in a video game. Some people may want to play as someone that they personally find attractive if they're going to be staying at their character for a long period of time. And I don't see a problem with that. It's all boiled down to personal preference. And I feel a lot of the times, especially when it concerns like internet arguments, and especially arguments concerning pieces of media and why someone may enjoy an aspect to it or not, a lot of people get defensive if someone else enjoys an aspect because that's different from the aspect that they enjoy or that they find brilliant. And we can like hyper focus in on these little like narrowly defined arguments when at the end of the day, it just kind of boils down to personal preference and at the end of the day, does it even really matter? If someone got into Nia Automata solely because they thought 2B was hot as hell, and they just wanted to stare at her cheeks like flapping in the wind or whatever, but they walked away absolutely loving the world and the character design, not ca well, character design obviously, but also like they came, they fell in love with the world and the story and all that, and the game really impacted them on that level. That's a cool thing in my opinion. That that game was able to draw in a certain audience and have them walk away expanding their horizons and broadening them all the same. That's a really cool idea. And you can also argue that a lot of these like arguments are chronically online in regards to the idea that, oh, you only like two, you only like Nia Automata because 2B has a big ass. Like there's some like idiots out there that'll make that argument because they can't see beyond their own preferences and they may not enjoy Nia Automata for whatever reason. Like you don't have to enjoy a video game, right? You can dislike a video game for whatever reason you damn well want. It's not, none of my issues, none of my business. 
But there's also an a sect of people out there that will try and belittle other people's preferences, and I feel a lot of defensive orientations or just defensive postures a lot of people can strike in regards to this issue, especially for games like Nier Automata, right? Come as a direct result of that, because maybe they were told or they just hear a lot of conversation in regard to the only reason that this game is popular is because of, like, say, 2B's butt, when they know there's a lot more to this game. And I would agree. I would argue, well, character design is, let's say, visually pleasing to the eye, but there's also a lot more to this game. There's a lot more to these characters. 2B isn't the only main character. I would argue she's one of three, alongside two, well, it's 2B, 9S, and A2. You can argue the pods if you really want to get butt actually with it. Like, you could make that argument. And I think that'd be a pretty fun argument to make, actually. I may do that in the future. But, like, those are the main three. But the one that was advertised the most was 2B. And that's by design. Now, you may be asking, well, JMOS, this is also a Stella Blade video. It's so, like, what's going on here? Well, Stella Blade is kind of under the same umbrella of this discussion. Where the developers are the same development studio as Nikkei. Yeah. Have you seen the videos of those anime girls with, like, wild, wild, wild physics? Chances are it's Nikkei. They're the people, at least that's the studio, behind Stella Blade. And if you've seen actual gameplay of Stella Blade, you may realize that the main character has ass jiggle physics. I'm not joking about that. The sexualization and, well, all the cautions and all that are obvious. And I feel trying to pretend that they're not is just doing a disservice to, well, reality. And if the game relies on that as a crutch, to, like, prop up a more subpar or lackluster experience, then it won't be enough to salvage the game. But if it's more the case of Neo Automata, where it's just like, we can lure you in with this, but you'll stay for all the existential questions we'll give you, then it can work. And I don't think, I don't even think, like, fan service at the end of the day needs a reason to exist. I d it doesn't need to serve some kind of grander strategy. At the end of the day, the internet can be a very judgmental place, and we can all be judgmental from time to time, including myself, right? But I feel that a lot of the times, we can get too judgmental about certain aspects, and just like, if a game just wants to have fan service for the f act of having fan service, like, it's okay. If the game's not good, then the game's not gonna be good, but... And there's obviously, like, extremes to this conversation, right? But a lot of the times, internet conversation can get too focused in on those extremes and ignore the rest of the spectrum that lies in the middle. A lot of, in a lot of internet conversation conversation can just be too polarized at the end of the day, as if people need to dig into their own trenches and just argue whether it's in good faith or not in regards to whatever the po whatever point they're trying to crucify themselves at at the end of the day. What if you just take a step back and analyze the situation? Well, there may be some more nuance in context that makes things at least make a little bit more sense or not, or just at the end of the day, how does it really impact you? Like I said before, I have a rather high tolerance, if you even want to call it that, in regards to fans of us like this. Crap. Hell, my two favorite games of all time are Nia Automata and Xenoblade Freaking 2, right? And I've made numerous videos over the years as to why I think those two games are brilliant in terms of the gameplay as well as the story and the way they tell a story. But they both have blatant fan service, and that's fine. Whether it serves a point on the on the whole or not, I don't think it needs to be justified at the end of the day. The more important question that I ask is if if the game is good or not. And to me, Xenoblade 2 and the Automata really were good. And from what we've seen and from the world and the story of Stella Blade, it looks good. And it looks interesting. I want to see a little bit more gameplay. I want to get my hands Sorry, indigestion, hold on. I swear to God I'm coming down with something or oh, whatever. <clears throat> okay, back to the conversation, though. I want to get my hands on the actual combat loop of Stella Blade just to see how it really ticks and how it would feel to actually physically play. But outside of that, the rest of it looks pretty good. The world looks interesting, the main character... Well, they know what they're doing. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. Some of the internet, and at least some of the segments of the internet, can get really pu puritanical in regards to a lot of this conversation, which I find is mostly cringe. Like, preferences and all that, right? But, at, like, at the end of the day, personally, I would rather look at a character that I find attractive than someone that I don't. Does that mean every game I have to play has to have characters that I personally find attractive? Hell no. Does it mean I want every game to have the fan service levels of Neo Automata, Xenoblade 2, or even Stella Blade? Hell no. Am I gonna get upset if it exists? No. Game looks good, characters look good, world looks good, story seems interesting, gameplay seems functional, and has some potential to it, and I want to play it. And the main question in regards to Stella Blade is if all of these separate aspects can come together to make a really good game, and it seems like it will. I have a fairly decent track record of when it comes to a game, being able to judge from the trailers and the gameplay we get whether or not I'm going to enjoy it. There's a skill set that I've 
I've developed over the years. I can't say whether or not you will personally enjoy a game, but chances are I can identify if a game is going to be fun for me. And Stellar Blade gives me the idea that it will be fun for me. We of course need to wait for the game to actually come out, or even to get a demo. I don't know if that's going to happen, I would love to see it, but we don't know. So, like, in conclusion, like, what's the main takeaway? I think a lot of the times, internet discourse can just really do itself a disservice, and especially doing a disservice to the thing you're trying to defend, quote-unquote. Games have fan service, Stellar Blade and the Automata absolutely have fan service, and that was definitely part of the appeal for a lot of people as to why they had initial interest in the games. And that's fine, because when it came to Nier Automata, at least, that was part of the whole idea they were going for. Draw you in with the looks of the world and the characters, and keep you in with the story and everything going on. That's part of the charm of it. Now, maybe they're doing something similar for Stella Blade. We'll have to wait and see. Like, time will tell in regards to that, but I don't think necessarily having fan service is a bad thing. And I think a lot of the reason some of the pe a lot of people out there seemingly are kind of flocking to games that have either fan service or more attractive characters is because over the years, it's been kind of... I don't even necessarily want to say it's frowned upon, but more and more games have been coming out that try and, like, make a statement by having characters that say maybe not a lot of people on the whole would find... What's that phrase? Oh, dude, it's on the tip of my tongue. Typically attractive? Let's go with that for now. And almost kind of wearing it like a badge of honor. And I don't think there's anything wrong with having characters that just look different to the norm. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's just, on the whole, people mostly don't want things shoved down their throat. Or feel as if they're being told that what they like is bad and that they should like this other thing. Typically, when you go about trying to handle it like that, people are gonna push back. And then when you have a game like Stellar Blade come around to the table, that kind of bucks a lot of those notions. And these aren't, like, industry-wide things, right? They're just, like, scattered examples. But when it happens consistently, not even necessarily consistently, but it happens multiple times to some of your favorite IP or some of your favorite games and whatever, or a thing that looked interesting to you, it can build up a notion in the back of your head that eventually, well, maybe runs a little bit wild. So when a game like Stellar Blade comes around that is unabashedly fan service and leans into those sexual aspects to it, people will gravitate to that. I also tend to find a lot of people nowadays are starting to, like, kind of buck away from a lot of the quote-unquote internet talk or just takes and trends that became popular because of internet discussions when a lot of people don't really feel that way. And I think this entire conversation kind of falls into that camp where people are pushing back against things that they're told they should accept and whatnot. There's a larger, more overarching conversation that can be had there, but I think that's a discussion for another day. And with that, I think I'll call the video there for the day. Thank you all for tuning in. My pleasure for making the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out and helps support future content, and I greatly appreciate it. Yeah, I'm gonna go try and get better, so... If you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified when I upload and stream in the future, because I will be covering Stellar Blade up to its release and I will be playing it on the channel in all likelihood. So thank you all for tuning in. Stay safe. Have a great day. Leave a comment down below with your thoughts on the subject matter. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let's get some good conversation going in the comments down below, right? Thank you all for tuning in. Stay safe. Have a great day. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Until we meet again.